Uh, this session is uh, about the uh, development of a nationwide research data management platform leveraged by Open Science Framework. My name is uh, Shoji Kajita. I am the uh, organiz organizer of this session. Uh, we have another two speakers. Uh, one is uh, Eric Olson from Center for Open Science and Yusuke Komiyama from uh, National Institute of Informatics in Japan. Uh, we, we are using a little bit uh, proprietary softwares and hard hardware. Sorry about that. Anyway, our concern is the uh, research data management. As you know, researchers are, are doing this activity every day. But uh, the surrounding contexts are quickly changing. For example, research integrity, open access issues, and the uh, uh, open science uh, movement in the world. And uh, most of researchers are using uh, digital technologies to perform uh, re their research activities. This is a very uh, complicated situation. So how we can provide institutional services for researchers who can easily adapt to new contexts in terms of RDM? That is our uh, uh, concerns. And uh, in this session, uh, we have two nationwide uh, RDM infrastructure. One is from US and the other is uh, uh, Japan. Those are uh, uh, developed by Open Science Framework, uh, which is an uh, open source software developed by Center for Open Science. And uh, actually, Gakunin RDM uh, is using the uh, Open Science Framework by uh, uh, forking and uh, uh, customizing. So, uh, and uh, firstly, uh, Eric Olson is going to uh, describe about the uh, open science framework, and then uh, Yusuke is going to be uh, describing the uh, 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 Gakuni RDM. And finally, I'd like to address current our major challenges on uh, our project. So first is Eric. Thank you, Shoji. And thank you all for uh, actually, uh, this was uh, Shoji's session and he invited me to come and join you. It's the first time I've come to this uh, event. So really uh, excited to be part of this uh, group. Um, and we have some things going on at, at the Center for Open Science that I think will appeal to this community, and I'll, I'll get into that uh, here in a moment. So I, as, as Shoji pointed out, what, one of the things we're, we're, we're going to focus on today is the, where the overlaps between open science and open uh, source come into play, and then the OSF is a, is a great case study here in that it is a... Um, and just pause for a moment to tell you a little bit about why we... Are we do this at the Center for Open Science? Why we work on software, um, and this is just one example of the kind of challenges that um, we just heard about uh, generally. In that, um, some years ago, there was uh, this concept of a replication crisis was being discussed in uh, a number of research disciplines, and what that means is that uh, many researchers were lacked confidence that the research that is being published and put in trusted sources, actually that they could take the same data and the same methods and produce the same results, which is a very bad sign if you're, if you're building your career on uh, those research findings and uh, hoping to, that those are going to lead to new discoveries and new cures and, and things like that. Um, and research over the last, since then, um, have have demonstrated that this is very likely the case in a number of disciplines, including psychology and cancer biology, that uh, that replication and reproducibility actually are quite low uh, in those fields. Uh, and so one of the things that we do at the Center for Open Science is to sort of pursue this, this problem. And the way that we uh, intend to do that is to increase openness, integrity, 
reproducibility of research and in, in doing so, increasing trust in research communities and in research results. Um, COS is a nonprofit organization based in uh, Charlottesville, Virginia. And we do, I'm, I'm going to talk mostly about the infrastructure today, but we actually do a lot of things in this pyramid here. You may have actually seen this before because it gets shared a lot. Um, but this is our, our theory of change in that we think we can make these things and our mission happen, but the technology alone are not going to make any of this, uh, any of this happen, but it will make it possible to make good, open, transparent practices and open science possible and then iterate to make them easier. But then communities take those on to make them normative expectations. And by the time you've dragged everybody into doing those great, better practices, then it's policymakers are getting involved. And in the U.S., we've seen this over the last couple of years uh, where federal funders now uh, are putting their plans together to make research data, the data behind research papers, must be uh, accessible publicly, uh, whereas that, has, that was not the case. That was not the expectation previously. So that is a big part of um, opening some of this uh, transparency and trust factor. And so with the OSF, a software that we developed to make the, these things possible and easy, um, our goal is to enable these practices like data reuse, data sharing, being able to share findings, even if they aren't the flashy ones that the traditional publishers want to share, and ultimately data that can lead to reproducibility, enable all of these things um, with tools that are easy to use. And that's where the OSF comes in. And so OSF is free for researchers, for users. We have over 700,000 users that come from all over the world. Um, and the OSF is open source and has been since it launched in 2012. Um, and it is meant to support a lot of the research practices that those researchers rely on in order to build that uh, necessary trust so they can plan, they can collaborate and, and manage their research and then re report out their findings all in, in best in class uh, and ex expected ways that uh, things like the example of the, the US funders would all um, encourage. So there's just a look here at a couple of our um, interfaces on the OSF, but uh, we num maintain a number of different workflows so, so that based on what the researcher is trying to do, if they're putting a research plan versus, um, you know, in the middle of their research and then ultimately sharing, those are different things. So their workflows are slightly different. Um, so there is a lot of different activities and workflows that we maintain uh, in, in the behind the scenes on the OSF to make that an easy experience for the users. Uh, and I mentioned again here the um, US funders, when they made these expectations clear a couple of years ago and those plans have to go into effect next year uh, to make data sharing um, the, the norm for anything that they fund, they also included for where that data needs to live, what are the expectations for what those repositories will be able to do. What you can't do uh, anymore is just stick your data on your flash drive and say, you know, that I'm just going to call it a day. I'm going to say in my paper, you can email me uh, because um, what we found is that people don't respond to those and actually send the data. Uh, and data is very easily lost and confused in those cases. So the expectation is that they would go to repositories that have particular characteristics, uh, including being sustainable in the long term, um, having a, a metadata that is very clear and uh, accessible, um, and ideally that the access to those are not behind any sort of uh, particular paywalls, which we struggle with a little bit uh, in research and scholarly communication and a number of fronts. Um, but on the OSF, user will never run into those, into those barriers. So we actually do really well with those expectations, uh, even though these were only released um, a year or so ago. Uh, the OSF is in a really good position to align with all of those expectations. And um, so those data sharing and, and um, data management processes that um, are going into effect by those funders, the NIH, for example, those went into effect for them this year already. Um, the OSF is already built to support a lot of those things, and then we just iterate it more and more to make them easier and easier uh, within the platform. Uh, and just to 
to point out that what you see on the surface, the data itself is only part of all of this and actually uh, metadata and research is pretty, can be pretty complex. Um, and so we have a lot of our own uh, default uh, metadata systems that we've updated just in the last couple of years. And then we've also integrated software uh, that allows communities that have very, very complex uh, metadata standards uh, to have those also built into the platform through uh, this tool called uh, Cedar, which is developed out of as open source software out of Stanford uh, University. So now even the most complex version, uh, like disciplinary metadata, you can attach to your objects in the OSF rather than hoping that someone can discover and, and determine what those are. And just give you one idea of um, the interoperability that we're trying to uh, achieve on the OSF. This is looking at persistent identifiers as one example here, but as one of those desired characteristics from the federal agencies. Um, so in research, we have persistent identifiers for people, places, and things. Uh, and I, those identifiers are registered by third parties that specialize in this. And um, those don't ever decay like a, you know, a, a web address uh, could, you know, your website on your, uh, even on your university page or, or other uh, less persistent versions of uh, sharing your work. And because these now are, are pretty good at working together, those organizations and then tools like the OSF technically connecting them, now we can connect an identifier for, for a person with their things, their research outputs, and the places that they come from, the research institutions that they represent. And now that is distributed all across the web, across indexes, and all of the relationships across them are all uh, clarified in the metadata itself. So you can look at a metadata record and see all of these things. Uh, and the researcher does very little of this. Uh, the OSF does it all for them. It distributes these things around into these indexes so that they don't have to worry about it, but they get those advantages. Um, and then, as uh, Shoji mentioned, the institutions, the universities and labs and organizations that are supporting the researchers, you know, they are left with a big challenge here and to support their researchers as they're trying to do all of this because the researchers rarely have these things on top of mind because they're very busy doing you know, the projects that they're really passionate about. So they're managing of their data and, and documenting their research plans. They're not always uh, on top of that. So the institutions must be so that they remain, remain compliant with those policies with uh, the federal government and others. Um, so one of the ways that we're supporting that as in the OSF is we've built a layer on top of the, the free tools for those 700,000 uh, users that institutions can, can rely on that will allow the, the users within their institutions to affiliate their content with the institution. And so that it gives a public face to all the data sharing that uh, and other material sharing that their users are doing. Uh, but also they would have insights into all of the activity that uh, those users may or may not be sharing yet. And they wouldn't see things that uh, the user hasn't given them permission to see, but they would get a sense in the aggregate uh, if their users and even by department with sort of compliance with those data sharing expectations, uh, are they um, are they facing so far? And do they have champions in their institutions? They have ones they really need to work closely with to catch them up and then ultimately actually help them uh, maintain their, their metadata up to a good standard. So those are this is a service that we've enabled over the last five years on the OSF. And then ultimately, the, what we build these really cool tools. We think uh, they're cool uh, on the OSF to, to enable the, these major phases of the research life cycle but what we don't want to do is reinvent tools that already do a really good job at particular things within that, that entire uh, research life cycle, like the identifiers that I already mentioned. We don't create brand new kinds of identifiers. We actually use the ones that communities have already adopted. Um, but then for things like data storage, we have a native storage option that a researcher can rely on if they like. But if they're already storing their things in a, in a um, a software for uh, that their institution provides or that they prefer like Dropbox or Google Drive or other data repositories. They don't have to duplicate those in order to have them represented and document on the OSF because we integrated with those tools. So now all your files are represented in your, your project space on the OSF, uh, but 
They are still the files that are living in Google Drive and you and your collaborators can, can work with them together um, through the OSF platform. And this is where we're, we're working right now to uh, improve some of our open source community work um, as we have a, a grant from the National Science Foundation here in the US uh, to take what we've been doing there, those extensions and integrations to the OSF and start bringing in new research communities or software development communities that see value in integrating or improving those tools that we already have. Um, so we've been doing uh, work to prepare for this over the last year and over the next couple of months, we'll launch a brand new uh, API that separates those integration services from the rest of the OSF. So somebody who wants to come and develop, uh, connect a cool tool that they work with, there's several over here in the, in the ballroom, uh, but if they see a value in having those connected with the OSF, then they don't have to, to pull out the whole OSF and recreate it in order to develop that service connection. They would just pull, just use that one uh, integration service um, and then socializing and, and providing governance around that. Uh, so all of this will launch over the next couple of months. And then subsequently we would have grants. Uh, we would put out a call for proposals for grants for groups that wanna do just that. So they would get a, you know, a small grant um, to develop their work toward the OSF and connect those uh, together. So some that we already have in progress or we already uh, have, um, our data repositories, I mentioned some of the cloud storage providers uh, from our, our institutional members and others. Um, and then we have some that are, we've already launched or will launch soon uh, with cloud computing options. So if you have really complicated um, computing that you need to run, you can have the, the files stored in the OSF send them to a uh, computing provided by uh, NASA or the European Space Agency. They would run the computing for you and then send the results back. Uh, so those are things we're working on. But what we're, we're really hoping for is to have proposals come in from really creative software development communities to say that they have something really exciting that they would wanna work on uh, and have connected to the OSF and that we would provide grants and support and documentation uh, to enable that for them. So this is all coming uh, in just the next few months in the, in the fall of this year. So uh, we came to this event because Sergio invited us, but also because I think this uh, is exactly the sorts of, of communities and individuals that uh, would make up a target audience for something like this. Um, so really would look forward to, to chatting with any of you if this catches your eye at all. I have some info about the OSF and swag and stuff, so you can come see me. Um, but also you'll be, you'll, if you're in the, the open source uh, forums and such, you'll probably see more about this over the next few months and really hope that you'll come in and work with us. So thank you uh, for uh, listening to uh, my talk about the OSF here. And now we'll uh, bring uh, Yusuke up here to chat a little bit more about what they're working on in Japan. Hi, hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Yusuke Komiyama. I uh, come from uh, National Institute of Informatics, NII uh, Japan. NII is uh, Japanese NREM. NREM means uh, National Research and Education uh, network uh, organization. So uh, today I talk about current status of Gakuni RDM. Gakuni RD, RDM is a, a Japanese research data management platform. So I'm a, I'm a faculty, but my, my uh, main work is development of our uh, nationwide uh, research data management uh, service. So uh, I uh, started to develop Gakuni RDM uh, uh, as a nationwide RDM service since April 2017. And I'm mm, interested in free and open source software related to uh, research data management. <coughs> Uh, this slide shows uh, policy uh, development of open uh, science in Japan. 
uh, the uh, discussion uh, mainly focuses on the uh, open science uh, that was started in 2015 at the uh, cabinet office. Uh, they um, pull uh, the uh, discussion on you know, policy aspect and also describe the uh, importance of uh, infrastructure. Okay, uh, next. Uh, this is a good policy uh, making from our infrastructure point of, of view. Uh, but uh, from researchers' uh, point of view, there are so many things to do. And they may, may feel uh, these are the extra uh, work to do. Uh, and uh, th uh, things we have to do is to uh, design our infrastructure could make uh, it a uh, part of their work and uh, effectively uh, support the research uh, itself by our infrastructure. Uh, uh, based on the uh, direct, uh, direction discussed at the cabinet office and uh, science council in Japan, we started to develop data uh, platform named NII uh, Research Data Cloud, NII RDC, uh, for uh, faculty uh, data driven science and, uh, uh, so, sorry, for facilitating data driven science and open science in Japan. Uh, we started uh, the development in 2017 and from two, uh, and uh, from 2021, we moved to the production level operation. Uh, along with research data life cycle, NIRDC is uh, composed of these uh, different uh, components. In case of publication platform and discovery platform, uh, we have already been uh, provided from the uh, before, uh, but mainly uh, focusing on journal articles. Uh, and discovery uh, and uh, publishing platform and uh, also uh, research, uh, we uh, make uh, we are developing uh, research data uh, management platform so, uh, Gakni RDM is a part of uh, NIRDC our research data infrastructure operated by NII and uh, uh, specialized in uh, handling uh, uh, cross, uh, pri uh, cross mean, uh, private uh, and uh, restricted to sharing uh, data, uh, data during the uh, research uh, process. Uh, in uh, February 2021, we started uh, providing RDM service to academic infrastructure uh, uh, institution across Japan with an operational system with uh, 24 uh, hour uh, part and uh, uh, seven days operator, uh, operators. NII adopted open science framework for, uh, uh, developed by the uh, for, uh, Center for Open Science in the US as the uh, essential software uh, for Gakuni RDM. NIA has implemented uh, new mm, uh, functions uh, required for Japanese acad uh, academic institutions. Gakuni <coughs> uh, RDM is uh, uh, our, uh, our research data management service, uh, which has already been adopted by uh, 114 institutions. The sixth basic plan for science, technology, and innovation. Uh, published by the cabinet office in 2021 uh, states uh, that uh, all university and uh, research institutions with uh, an institutional repository must establish an institutional data uh, policy uh, by 2025. Additionally, uh, all funding agencies are required to request a data management plan, a DMP, uh, for all new budget uh, calls starting in 2023. Uh, these policies have uh, greatly uh, contributed to the widespread uh, adoption um, of our GACNI RDM.
the system uh, enables a user to integrate various research tools and uh, could uh, cloud service already in use uh, by researchers. Institutions uh, can also uh, connect their own store. Ah, sorry. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, can also connect their own storage to the service, uh, making it available to their faculty. The, uh, faculty members. The development of Gakunya Dem is uh, focused on two uh, main areas, uh, providing new features uh, to uh, support research itself and uh, offering new functions for institutional management. These new functions are um, determined uh, through ongoing uh, discussions with the uh, community. This uh, slide uh, show a concept of Gakunin RTM service. Uh, there are uh, 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 this slide is a detail of uh, our visions. So <coughs> we make uh, these functions for um, researchers and uh, institutions. Uh, this uh, slide uh, gives an overview of the function of Gakuni uh, RDM. Uh, first one is uh, users can uh, log into the system using Gakuni. Uh, Gakuni uh, means uh, Japanese uh, Authentication and uh, Authorized Infrastructure Federation, AI Federation. User can uh, immediately start sharing and managing, uh, managing uh, data with collaborators. Uh, Gakuni RDM can uh, connect various cloud services. And uh, uh, number three, uh, data upload in, into the system will be uh, time stamped by uh, time stamp authority. The system, uh, uh, number four, the system can be customized by the system administrator uh, inst for um, institutions. Uh, system administrator can uh, connect institutional uh, storage. So I will talk about uh, each in more detail. Gakuni uh, RDM is uh, registered as a service provider in the Gakuni uh, Federation AI, and uh, users can use the system only by linking with the institutional identity provider uh, part, uh, participating in Gakuni. Uh, uh, user uh, selects uh, their institution in the discovery service from the Gakuni RDM uh, home screen uh, and uh, log into uh, research data management service uh, from each university's uh, ID uh, provider. And uh, users uh, use the research data uh, RDM service with uh, a single sign on. And uh, we adopted on uh, adopted uh, open uh, OSF as base system of uh, Gakuni RDM. The uh, research data sh uh, sharing function of uh, Gakuni RDM is able to launch such a uh, portal screen for each uh, research project. Users uh, can in invite collaborators uh, to the uh, portal and uh, manage and share research data uh, before uh, publication uh, via uh, browse, web browse. In addition to uh, writing the abstract uh, of the uh, project, uh, settings, uh, setting tags for such, and displaying the uh, log of uh, co-authors operation history, uh, there is a week uh, for discussion and uh, comment function. Next, uh, Gakuni RDM can uh, connect to select various cloud services according to the uh, purpose and the scale of the university. It is possible to mount uh, storage uh, from uh, typical cloud providers on the system. In a uh, red, uh, red, uh, uh, red character uh, plugins that have been extended by NII, especially uh, from open source code. And, uh, uh, this figure shows the uh, flow of providing 
the data、uh, content by a timestamp、uh, authority. The timestamp service is、uh, used to、uh, send the、uh, hash value uh, of, uh, of the data.、Uh, the system gets a timestamp token uh, to uh, guarantee、uh, that the file is unique in the system.、Uh, project administrator can data. Uh, manu uh, uh, manipulation and uh, uh, content uh, changes that do, don't happen、uh, through g a k u n i r d m This is original function of g a k u n i r d m And、uh, for institution system administrators,、uh, there is g a k u n i r d m management application. It is、uh, designed to allow institutional administrator to control. The、uh, types of storage and research,、uh, research tools are available uh, to uh, users with, in, is,、uh, with the organization. In addition to、uh, managing institutional storage quotas, there are log, uh, acqu acquisitions, uh, functions, and、uh, storage usage statistics、uh, for institutional administrators.、Uh, Uh, uh, next slide uh, is uh, in,、uh, integrated、uh, Jupyter Hub on g a k u n i RDM. This is、uh, a basic idea of in,、uh, integrati integration、uh, between g a k u n i RDM and Jupyter Hub. We extended g a k u n i RDM to allow、uh, researchers to configure,、uh, build, and manage their Jupyter、uh, environment. The researcher can、um, select the、uh, back end、uh, computing resources.、Uh, the default is、uh, NIS on premise、uh, Kubernetes clusters.、Uh, optionally, you may uh, uh, use your university resources,、uh, which、uh, requires the administrator to install、uh, Jupyter Hub in、uh, advance. If you Can install Jupyter Hub、uh, by yourself. You can also uh, yeah, utilize a、uh, virtual machine or a、uh, uh, public cloud. And, uh, next uh, vi uh, vision,、uh, this, this slide is next uh, vision. Uh, we uh, are uh, developing uh, new fun、uh, features for data governance as an extension of g a k u n i RDM. The data management plan, DMP required by funding agency, is、uh, seen as、uh, efficient for improving、uh, research、uh, support due to its、uh, static nature uh, uh, and uh, in,、uh, inability uh, to uh, adapt to or enhance、uh, ongoing research activities. A proposed Uh, pose a solution、um, involves、uh, creating a, a semi automatic RDM environment based on the、uh, DMP, enhancing、uh, research efficiency and quality by making the DMP a dynamic part of the research process, and improving、uh, data、uh, governance. Uh, finally, uh, the uh, NII Research Data Cloud. Is enhancing open science and data、uh, intensive science、uh, through the、uh, development of seven new uh, features. Uh, these ad、uh, advancements、uh, aim aims to provide、uh, robust support for research data management,、uh, facilitate、uh, seamless data sharing and、uh, collaboration, and ensure data security and Compliance.、Uh, this initiative uh, reflects uh, NIA's com、uh, commitment to uh, host, uh, fostering uh, innovation and excellence in research uh, methodologies. And, uh, 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 ultimately, uh, accelerating、uh, science、uh, discovery and knowledge、uh, dissemination.、Uh, Uh, that's all.、Uh, thank you.
Thank you very much. As you see, uh, Gakuni RDM is using Open Science Framework by customizing a lot. Finally, I would like to address uh, our major challenges in the context of open source software. So this is a, a, a GitHub view of Gakunin RDM. And uh, the screenshot is a little bit small, but uh, as you see, Gakunin RDM has very behind of open science framework. Actually, uh, actually one thousand and the four hundred fifty five commits behind on um, during the uh, four years so uh, that is a, a very big issue for uh, right now for the uh, uh, Gakni RDM and uh, to address this issue we need to create a new <laughs> sorry a, a, new, a new big patch <laughs> or uh, uh, create uh, additional small patches but the uh, uh, both require time and cost a lot and the further issue is the uh, uh, OSF itself is uh, continuing their development and uh, uh, so um, w to address this uh, issue we decided to have a, a two-day <laughs> two-day workshop at the uh, uh, Charlottesville uh, where is the center uh, for uh, where is the uh, headquarter of the uh, Center for Open Science. And uh, yeah, anyway, we need more time. <laughs> so uh, we have another uh, five minutes to have a uh, question and discussions on our uh, presentation. Do you have any questions? I can take no questions, Patrick. I think that uh, uh, in Japan, uh, 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 government pressure is very big right now for the uh, uh, research data management, uh, especially for the uh, uh, um, research integrity issues, I think. So uh, that is a uh, main reason why 100 18 institutions are joining to the uh, Gakuni RDM. Yes.
every time uh, underlying software updates, you can update that. That doesn't matter. It's just to check your local uh i think that the uh how can i say the basic design concept is different between uh uh osf and the gakuni rdm uh in the case of osf is for the uh open science activity but uh, in the case of gakuni rdm is the uh uh, uh, more general research data management platform. So this concept level differences are causing uh, a lot of customization at the uh, NII. So, but uh, how can I say, OS OSF is now redesigning their infrastructure. Uh, to uh, how can I say uh, uh, more uh, more mm, configurable? <laughs> Thank you for the word. <laughs> configurable, configurable uh, environment. So in the future, I think that the. Uh, uh, how can I say? Yeah, plugin model is uh, available, but not now. Do you have any additional comments on that? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll point out that um, we have uh, institutional members and users all over the the world, and one of the things very quickly was apparent is that data, uh, the the policies for data storage are there's a lot of those regionally that um we needed to support so you can on the osf now one example of what um so just referring to is that you can choose where to store your files as an osf user between four different regions to meet those data storage policies but right now all of the metadata for that still is stored in the us so we don't right now have a, a regional configuration where Mostly you run the OSF with a little bit of configuration per region to enable exactly what you're, you're referring to. And we're probably, you know, 18 months of work you know, to get there. But the, the clues are stacking up that that's, you know, something we'll, we'll probably need to pursue. Um, but it'll, it'll be a big task for us, just our staff of, you know, 14 engineers that have to manage many, many parts of the OSF development currently to to get there but uh, likely that is a path that we're we're going to be on yeah Yeah, well, I can tell just from we're, we're right in the thick of doing, uh, redoing a lot of open source governance things right now. And so what's extremely valuable is for communities that even would consider contributing to things like the OSF, uh, just connecting and, and we want to listen to you as my is my point. And we we're not in a position to, to tell you what's the a good path to, you know, a tools to pick or. Uh, you know, ways to move forward, but we do want to, to get to where we, we're a good home for that. And the best way to do it is to listen uh, to groups uh, like those that you, you all represent. 
Um, so I am a hundred percent an open door for this. And I have staff that, uh, they're pretty much, they're doing this full time is just listening to these groups. We're documenting a lot of these needs and then we're trying to open those doors for them to come and contribute uh, to the OSF. You need know, to start with, with those grants that we have in the fall, but then having that be a sustainable, maintained, uh, community, you know, connection in the long term. Um, so the, yeah, at first we just would really, really like to to talk to you and see what your priorities and interests are. And if there are some things that uh, align, then we would definitely want to uh, leverage that. Do you have any ad additional questions or comments? Okay. Thank you very much for having us uh, in this great conference and uh, uh, enjoy your rest of the conference. Thank you.